Thank you everyone for joining me, Grisha and Bobo today. Um, my name is Carrie Mai and I will be your host today. I am a Vancouver realtor with Oakland Realty and I am so pleased to present to you a very interesting and important topic around home equity. Oftentimes, my clients reach out to me and they think, well, you know, I have to pay monthly payments on my home for the next 25 or 30 years. And all these payments go into a big black hole. Well, Grisha and Bobo here today from CIBC, they are mobile mortgage advisors, and they will be explaining to you how this big black hole that you think is, you know, to the bank could actually work in your favor. So without further ado, I'll let the experts explain what home equity is and how you can leverage it for your own benefit. Ladies, take it away. Hi. Um, hi, we are here to share how to use the uh, leverage your e equity in your home. If my if I have a condo, it's um, was about $1 million right now and the mortgage balance is it's small. Is that possible to get some cash out of it to invest or buy something, do something different? So here's the questions. What's home equity? How are we gonna get it and what can you use for? If these are the questions that you have in your mind and it could be because you own a home and you would like to know how to extract some of the that value in cash. Let me give you a very simple example. If your house worth about $1 million right now and you only owe about 300,000, the difference is $700,000. That's your equity. In other words, that you owe 300,000 and actually sold it for $1 million, and you are actually making the money on the difference, which is about 700,000. But if you don't wanna sell your property, you're coming to the bank say, can bank give me the money up to full value of the house? Honestly, the answer is no. We can only do up to 80% of the value. So that's in this case, your usable equity is 500,000. If you have, do you have any plans that what can you do for the 500,000? I have seen people using for the following reasons. You can use it for renovate your existing home if you like where you live. Using the equity for home improvement is an excellent way to make your space more livable and also that enhance your resale value as well. And you can use it the funds to pay off your credit cards, car loans, student loan, whatever the loan with high interest. Basically, it's you can consolidate all, all of your debt in, in one with low interest rate. Or you can use the equity to buy another property, use it for a down payment for an investment condo, and the rental income pro pro produce the cash flow to cover your mortgage payments. That's also one way that you get rich at the first place. Basically, it's your home, it's your property, it's your money. So you can do whatever you want. Make sure you have a plan for it. And we're going to cover three key scenarios today for what can you use for your equity. So, for example, uh, here and there, we probably want to do some uh, housework. Um, maybe we want to take out some equity. It could be a roof. It could be piping. It could be maybe the kitchen or, or even a big, bigger project, adding a laneway house, for example. And we need some cash out of it. So we know that we have equity in the house. So now how can we tap into that equity that we have? So there's a few ways. We have a CIBC, for example, home line of credit, which is a home power plan. And we'll also have a combination of having that home line of credit together with a mortgage. So to take it out, as well as the third way to do it, it's just to take equity out directly from your mortgage. So for example, if we only need for a kitchen renovation of $30,000, now knowing that we have 700,000 equity, how can we use it? So in a real life scenario, so we know that we have a home that right now is valued with a million dollars. So all the work for the kitchen, it would cost us 30,000. And we know that existing mortgage that we have is only 300,000. So that's 700,000, what happened there? So the way how we do it is that we have several a scenario. For example, if we use the line of credit, for example, in the table, we'll see that we can have up to 65% of the home value. So it means that out of a million home, you can actually take out 
650000 in your home line of credit as a limit. And that will help you fund that kitchen renovation. Or you can have the combination of mortgage and line of credit, and you can have up to 80% loan to value, which is close to 800000 uh, of uh, limit available for out of a million homes. So now we can actually understand a little bit further what happened to, if you want to take equity out of a free and clear home. So the second scenario is you own a home that is free and clear title. The mortgage is being paid off already and you would like to cash out some funds for um, upgrade the floorings or kitchens or your master bedrooms. How does it work? You can get a, a secure line of credits or you can do a uh, redo an entire mortgage and take out all the, the value in cash, or you can go for CIBC home power plants. The situation is you have been living there for 15 years and you like where you live, the mortgage has been paid off, it's time for you to upgrade the floorings, kitchens, and you talk to your contractor. You get the estimate budget is about $150,000 to um, for renovations. Here's your options. The first option is you can apply for secure line of credits. Secure line of credit is like a credit card in your house and the credit limit is 650,000 as usable equity. It's like a credit card, you can pay it down, you can ring it up, you just cannot go over that limit. You can access the fund when you need to. If you don't use it, you don't need to pay interest. And the second option is you, uh, you redo an entire mortgage and cash out, cash out the um, use or usable equity in hands as cash. So which means that on the funding dates, you will receive 800K as cash and we wrap up in the mortgage for you. And the last option is CIBC home power plans is combine mortgage with a line of credit together. So in this scenario, you only need 150K for the renovations, and which means that uh, we, will, uh, we will do the 150,000 as a mortgage, and your mortgage come with a credit limit for 650,000. Why we uh, recommend for the CIBC home power plant? Because for CIBC home power plant, it's like a bundle in your, for your mortgage solutions. So for the line of credit components, it's good for meeting you the ongoing needs that give you the flexibility to access the cash without reapply. Simply just transfer the funds from the line of credit to your CIBC checking accounts and in your mobile apps. And one of the great features for Home Power Plan is when you pay down the principal in the mortgage components, that amount will be automatically accumulated in your credit limits, which means that you can use it again in the futures. That gives you the peace of mind knowing that you have the fund available and if you need it, so you don't need to reapply again. So uh, yeah, so we were using the line of credit to pay down debt, right? Well, know that we have an equity 750, uh, 700 and we have 750, uh, 750,000 for the line of credit. And also we have up to 800%, which is 800,000 for the equity takeout. So that means that you can actually take out close to $500,000 in cash, which you can use to pay your down payment or you can use it to pay your debt, for example, debt consolidation, right? So knowing that uh, the power of having uh, leveraging basically the line of credit is that we have the benefit to use it for debt consolidation as everybody may have like credit cards that are paying outstanding balance with really high interest. We may have other uh, student loans or any other sort of loans that we have outside like personal line of credit that are actually you're paying much higher interest. How can we benefit from the home line credit is that you can actually consolidate all those uh, outstanding balances into uh, to pay it off with your home line of credit and then you're saving a lot a lot of interest and that would translate into surplus in your monthly uh, account so that would be uh, saving on interest having more surplus in your account which you can use for down payment for another home or even uh, making those payments more organized as well as having access to that money so the good thing about home line credit is that you can pay it off anytime and it's only interest payment and you can keep it that limit reusable throughout that amortization, that mortgage. So think about that when you're building up, you're paying off your mortgage and that amount just increases. And, and plus if your property increases in value, that also means that you have even more room, more equity to take out in the future. 
and that's really building your wealth and cashing out at the same time. So what if you have equity in your house and should I use it for investments? So basically this is really depends on what's your plan and what's your long-term goals are. If you are a small business owner, you can invest the funds in your existing business. If you're a direct investor, you can invest in real estate markets or money markets. One thing keep in mind is once you cash out the equity, your payments will go up, which means that you have to start making the payments back to bank. Let's say if you decide to put the 500,000 equity to a down payment of an investment condo, please do have a conversation with your advisor because you wanna make sure that the rental incomes, the investment return can generate enough cash flow to cover your mortgage payments. If you are planning to invest in the money market, generally speaking for a conservative or balanced mutual fund, the annual return rate is about four to 8%. So the current return rate is higher than our current mortgage rate right now, but the principle is no guarantee. Make sure that you do some research before you do that, uh, before you start to cash out the funds. So one small tips for you is before you step into your home equity, it's make sure that you have a plan and understand what you're doing and understand the cost of borrowing and also have knowledge of the return rates because uh, once you cash out the funds and you can do whatever you want and invest and boost your money elsewhere. Yeah, so basically um, I would recommend clients that if they're planning to make a purchase, they're planning to tap that equity out, equity take out of 500,000 or 700,000. So I would say that the best way is to start with a pre-approval with us and but when I we can help you to uh, plan how to take out that money for your future purchase, for example. And then that will help you uh, not just look at one property. We're looking at maybe a portfolio is actually ahead. So that's why we need to leverage um, the home power plan, which is the home line credit that we have. So we can plan for next down payment and next down payment. So some of the uses are summarized that we can use it for renovation, any equity take out, a small project that you may have, or we can use it to consolidate all your debt so you're saving a lot of interest and have a surplus, and as well as investing. So investing include your real estate investment, whether your capital investment or um, mutual funds that you may have or RSP that you may have planned. But anyway, so the whole point of uh, leveraging, which is uh, equity take out from the home line of credit is that we're able to give you that flexibility, that cash flow, that access to money that you already have on hand. All right. So thank you, ladies, Grisha and Bobo, for educating us on what home equity is and what are some key uses that we can use um, to leverage our home equity for other things. Um, now I want to open the floor to the audience. If I want to purchase uh, subsequent investment properties using the existing equity that I have in my home, should they be using a home equity line of credit or should it be a combination of other sources that they should tap into? So uh, carry forward the question from your clients. So basically it really depends on when your client decides to buy um, the second property and um, how's the income, how's his income or her income, is it stable? And I would say that have the conversation with the advisor um, because we can do case by case. Like uh, let's say if you, uh, your client's planning to buy in the following uh, like uh, next two years and the income is not stable and I would recommend that um, start with a, a mortgage plus a home line of credits that can give you the uh, limits, uh, give you the access ability to use it as a down payment for the next property, which, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, to add to that, I would say that uh, usually we have clients that come to us for pre-approval and situation like that always come into mind. Okay. I have a home. I have equity. So what should I do with my next property? I want to buy a rental. Is there room for me to borrow more? I would say, yes, of course. Um, I mean, a rental income, it generates income, right? It's a rental income that you can add and that would add up to your room for like uh, lending, right? Your, uh, for mortgage. So then what we need to see is that what's your plan? Are you just buying, buying by yourself on your own name? So you're gonna be on title. 
if that's the case, yes, you can actually either use the equity that you have for your home to buy it. For example, if it's really hard for you to make an offer, you want to make a sorry, a free offer and then must have, then okay, if you have enough equity in the home, you can do that, okay. Uh, but if not, you're thinking to, okay, I'm, I'm conservative. I want to see the, the property appraisal. I want to see um, if I can get a mortgage for that property alone because of taxation. Uh, I want to be able to off, uh, uh, offset those uh, mortgage interest into uh, the rental income, right? So then that's another way to do it. And that would suggest that, uh, yeah, you may probably uh, use actually a part of the equity uh, of the home line equity for like down payment if the ratio works out and the income works out as well. And we'll do the pre-approval for you for that matter. And as well, and you can actually also get a mortgage for the new property. So that's why I highly recommend clients to actually uh, let us look at the file, let us help you with a mortgage pre-approval and you know what to target, what's the price you're looking for, and then what's the rental income you're, you're looking to have for the investment rental. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Thanks for the great presentation. Quick question. And uh, uh, so I'm an independent broker and like TABC is very, you know, very specific with, you know, their products. And of course they've got great products. I wish I had access to um, one of them is actually around, I believe it's um, the way you accept um, U S income. And if people have holding or operating companies, can you speak to maybe some people in the room who are entrepreneurs and they claim their income differently or they just, maybe they work remotely in the U S um, can you talk about uh, yeah how some of your products do accept that and uh, if in fact that's still the case? I think that's a big differentiator for CIBC is um, those exact kind of ex exceptions. Yeah, actually, I want to talk about, we have a lot of U.S. clients as well, okay, and they have some employee income, yes, and they can have their own home line of credit as well, and they can also get equity tech out for refinances. There's absolutely no an issue, I would say. We have a special program for that. And then uh, we just, I would say your question is a bit related also to the way we approve those mortgages. <laughs> but in reality, yes. uh, for client, right? Am I correct? <laughs> yeah, but then in reality, like for us, uh, the bank, right? We'll look at overall, right? We'll just look at one thing. So whether the client self-employed or earned a salary or have a combination of both, right? We just look at the overall qualifications. And uh, we do, we do have a lot of clients that are from US or working US or even foreign income that they actually have a mortgage and they can get a home line of credit, no problem. Uh, it's all up to, uh, you know, like the way we look at the documents is all up to their income, you know, and the stress test mm -hmm. that everybody mm -hmm. like, yeah, face. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I don't, I'm not sure if I, is, it, is that the question or is that the answer that you're looking for? Yeah, I, oh, I think you're just confirming that yes, people who make US income or they are self-employed, you're pretty mm -hmm. generous with the way you allow them to get a mortgage, even if their income is claimed in an unconventional way, according to most lenders, right? Uh, yeah, I would say that this is, I think this is what uh, uh, every lender, I would say, have their own uh, specific niche or target. But for CIBC, we have been pretty good, I would say, in general with foreign income, whether it is from the U.S. or it is from other places as well. So our loan to value can actually go up to 80% if it's a 2.25 million home. So, yeah. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Great job. Hey, Curry, it's Joanne. Hi, Joanne. Hi. Um, yeah, just to piggyback on the U.S. resident program um, question, I think uh, uh, CIBC does have a U.S. resident program uh, for clients that are living in the States and uh, in the underwriting perspective. And sorry, I just want to introduce myself there. I'm the area sales manager um, uh, for the mobile mortgage advisors. Uh, just really want to expand our conversation, probably something to tick offline with uh, Garcia or Bobo, because uh, I've seen in our underwriting world where we do treat U.S. residents very similar to Canadian residents. Um, of course, uh, to Garcia's point, we do look at, you know, other other countries as well, um, you know, uh, for, for their income. But uh, we do have a specified U.S. resident program for mortgages. So um, and in, in terms of, uh, you know, credit bureau, we can always ask for credit bureau from offshore here. Um, so we do treat it very similarly when it comes to the credit adjudication standpoint. So um, and loved for any of you to connect with uh, any of my team members uh, offline to kind of discuss further about your opportunities. Thank you. In terms of investments, um, using your home equity line of credit to purchase investments, um, are there, 
what is there that you need to specifically look for uh, in terms of taxation? Like, is it wise to use this home equity line of credit to buy, say, stocks or uh, mutual funds for their TFSAs or RSPs? Could you bring to light in terms of what people could do with that? For the taxation um, part, um, we would recommend you talk to your um, accountants for it. But for the um, interest in the in the line of credits, you were able to use it as a tax deductible. But for further more to this information, you will have to talk to accountants. Okay. Yeah, and I think I think most of the clients that do equity takeout uh, for investment, for example. Uh, whether it is the type of investment real estate or the type of investment in tax saving account, RSB, stock. So basically what they're really trying to uh, gain from it, I think is the difference of the rate. Like if your cost of borrowing is so low, we're talking about, uh, you know, the home line of credit rate versus the return that you may have with your investment. I think this is the main reason, that's the main drive for them to do that. In regards to how would that work in taxation world? I would say, yeah, it's really done case by case and we have a trade uh, trail paper, I would say with your accountant as well to do that. Uh, there's a word to work it out, yes. And we would take it like case by case. Got it. So I'm looking to purchase a subsequent investment property this year. I have an existing mortgage. I also have a home equity line of credit that I can borrow against up to 65%, I believe, of my mortgage. Now, when I send all my paperwork for approval, do they look at all the equity that I have built up in my existing home as income or like additional borrowing power? Does that help me in, a, in any way aside from just the down payment? Will it help me qualify for a larger mortgage? So to the Carrie's question is, um, if you have an existing line of credits, so basically the, uh, the credit line uh, limits in your existing um, um, line of credits, you can use it as a down payment. We will calculate that um, as a down payment and then the, your new property that we will take into the rental incomes in the qualifications. Okay, so it's not so much like, oh, I have, hundred thousand dollars built in in equity you won't look at that in terms of oh you know carrie actually has a hundred thousand dollars to spend additional on top of her monthly income and assets and everything correct it's just yeah. there if i need it yes uh, we, we would take a look at that as a uh, down payment source but um but uh we would take that that as a liability as well. So generally speaking, we will look at that uh, overall as you can use it as a down payment and plus we take a look at that as a liability. Okay, got it. Yeah, so equity equity takeout is not uh, income, basically. Yeah. Darn. <laughs> Great work, thanks for having us. Thank, Thank you. you.